Good morning everyone. It is a beautiful cool morning here in the sand hills of central Georgia and I'm getting ready to do some hiking and road cruising for some snakes. Um, it's going to get up to about 80 degrees today but it's currently in the 50s and it's going to heat up really slow so it should make for a pretty good window of opportunity for snake movement in the morning. I am hoping to see some southern hognose snakes, maybe even an eastern diamondback rattlesnake. Um, Pine snakes are in the mix as well, could be eastern hognose snakes, coach whips. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff down here, so I'm going to knock out the remainder of this drive and we will see what all we can find today. Oh my god! <laughs> First snake of the day is this little neonate eastern diamondback rattlesnake here at the most inland portion of their range in central Georgia. This is as far inland as you can find them anywhere in their range. This is right at the fall line just south of the Piedmont. Look, this little guy has just one little butt on his tail. Actually, two. But I would say this is this year's little neonate eastern diamondback. Oh my gosh. Look at it, it's so beautiful. So eastern diamondback rattlesnakes um, primarily live in coastal plain habitats. You can find them in um, some barrier islands um, off the coast. They'll reach large numbers, um, but they reach their highest densities in sandhill habitats like this, typically more in the coastal plain um, where there's an abundance of gopher tortoise burrows. They use those burrows to overwinter to um, have their babies, just like this little snake here. But, oh my gosh, would you just look at this snake. If I don't find anything else today, my day is made. Holy crap, that is beautiful. Favorite snake of 2021 by far. And this is the absolute coolest place to see these guys. I mean, just look at this little beauty. They really don't occur in high densities here because there's not too many gopher tortoises. Hence, uh, limited habitat for them. But... Um, they are just really good looking snakes here, um, and it's cool finding them this far from the coast. Uh, I'm in awe right now. When these are full grown, these are the largest rattlesnakes in the world. They can reach lengths of up to eight feet, although five to six feet is more common, um, especially these days. But there are still some big adults out there. Um, I actually found a big adult female here last year, but... This is actually the first time I have found a neonate eastern diamondback. Um, until this one, all of them have been um, pretty large adults. So, yeah, I'm going to move this little snake out of the road now, and we will get a closer look. And right here is one more look at this amazing little eastern diamondback rattlesnake in habitat. You can really see here with this pattern just how well this snake would blend in if it was sitting amongst some sticks or something like this here in this turkey oak savanna looking to um, ambush some small prey. Um, such an incredible little snake. I'm still in shock right now. I can't believe I got this right off. Hopefully it is a good sign for the rest of the day, but at this point, I don't really care. This is gonna be hard to top. So uh, yeah, gorgeous little Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake. I just moved it off the road in the direction it is heading in now. So um, I'm happy with the pictures I've got. So I'm going to leave this little snake right here and hopefully it'll make its way into this habitat and grow up to be a big, massive adult eastern diamondback one day. Um, the best possible way to start the day. Gorgeous little neonate eastern diamondback rattlesnake. And right here we have snake number two for the day. How about it? Good looking little hatchling southern hognose snake. This is one of this year's babies. Um, these snakes are really unique. They are common where they do occur, but they have a really patchy and limited distribution. They're primarily found in the coastal plain. Also around the sand hills, um, really along the fall line in the Carolinas and in Georgia, like where we are here. And they love... Um, turkey oak savannas, longleaf pine savannas, really sandy open canopy habitats. They primarily eat toads, um, just like eastern hognose snakes. 
these little southern hog noses are really cool there's not too many places where you can still find these snakes in numbers and luckily this is one of them as you can see it's flattening its head out here um, they do that defensively they hiss and puff themselves up but they're actually very reluctant to bite um, i could touch this little snake right now and it would actually play dead as a um, defense mechanism rather than strike at me so really good looking little snake um so happy i've got one here pretty quickly but um hopefully we will see some more some of these snakes have really beautiful orange contrast in between the uh black spots on their back this one doesn't really have that but still a good looking little southern hog nose so i'm going to move this little guy out of the road and get some good photos of it and keep on cruising and we will see what else we can find Right here is a closer look at this beautiful little southern hognose snake now that I have it out of the road. I actually like the grayish kind of silver coloration on this little snake because a lot of them are orange here. It's cool to see variation in them. But um, pretty cool look here at this little snake moving through its habitat. I'm just going to leave it to what it is doing here and keep on cruising and we will see if we can find some more snakes. Right, next snake of the day is another little hatchling southern hognose, and this one is even more silver than the last one. Almost has a bluish coloration to it. Really light, borderline like a grayish kind of sky blue color. Really unusual looking, but another little hatchling here just making its way across the road. Kind of surprised I haven't got any adults yet because normally I see them this time of the year. Um, and then later into October, you start getting more hatchlings. But either way, Southern Hognose Snake number two. We are on board for Hogtober and we are still in September. Not even October yet. Gorgeous little Simus. But anyway, um, I'm going to move this little snake out of the road to get some photos of it and we will get a closer look. Right here is another look at this beautiful little Southern Hognose Snake. This one is even prettier than the first one. Um, just a really light, almost silver coloration. Um, doesn't appear to be in shed or anything because it's really brightly marked. But um, yeah, Heterodon Simus number two for the day. Just check out this habitat here. Kind of some farmland mixed in here, but even these fields, it's all really sandy. Lots of toads, lots of open canopy habitat, lots of sand for these little guys to burrow in. So prime habitat for southern hognose snakes. But anyway. Maybe Simus number two, I'm going to keep on cruising. It's getting really hot now, so this might be close to the end of this little cruising window. But um, this little guy just moved, so I have my hopes up that we might just see some more snakes. But anyway, I'm going to hit the road and we will see what we can do. Good afternoon, everyone. It has been a few days since you guys last seen me in the sand hills of central Georgia. And I only found three snakes that day, but they were definitely three good ones. But anyway, um, now it is warm enough to cruise at night again, so I'm going to do just that. I'm going to head into an area of the Southern Ridge and Valley here in North Georgia to do some road cruising for Carolina Pygmy Rattlesnakes. But there are some other um, cool snakes in the area as well, so hopefully we will see something. But anyway, I have a pretty short drive ahead of me here, and then I will be at my destination road and we will see what we can find. All right, first snake of the night is this really large adult corn snake here out on the crawl. Took long enough to get the first snake, but not too bad. And this one actually kind of has this nice orange coloration overall. Kind of like the ridge and valley corns that occur further northeast up the ridge and valley. And this is the ridge and valley of North Georgia here, the southernmost extent of it, so not too surprising. But yeah, this one is actually a really vibrant individual. It doesn't really have that typical montane corn look that you see in a lot of the more inland populations. Um, the corn's up here. Oh, you want to bite me, don't you? Okay, that wasn't a clean bite. Um, the corn's up here actually look a bit different from the ones in the Piedmont, um, the Piedmont Mountains, the Blue Ridge Escarpment. They don't have those smaller blotches on the tail the way a lot of corns do. Uh, they're kind of more like coastal plain corns. They're just a really bright orange all over and 
really good looking snake. So this one kind of reminds me of the really big, gorgeous corn that I found in East Tennessee back in April. I also cruised it. Yeah, this has been a pretty good corn snake year for me. I think this is number six or seven now, and I haven't really specifically targeted them, so not bad. Just a really big, good looking corn, really clean. Um, really couldn't ask for a better one. But yeah, snakes are on the move, so I'm going to keep on working this habitat here, and we will see if we can find us a pygmy rattlesnake or something else tonight. Ow! You weren't going to let me get by unbitten, were you? <laughs> Alright, I'm going to move this snake off the road and get some photos, and we will see what else we can find. Good afternoon, everyone. It is now the following day, and that corn snake was the first and last snake that I found last night. But can't go wrong with that one. It was really pretty. Um, the temperature dropped really quickly, so not too much of a surprise. Um, corn snakes actually like to move when it's pretty cool. But uh, anyway, I'm heading back to that same region tonight to cruise for pygmy rattlesnakes again. So we will see what we can do. All right, guys. First snake of the night is this beautiful little uh, sub-adult canebrake rattlesnake here. Now this is in the southernmost extent of the Ridge and Valley here in northwestern Georgia. Um, so we're close to the mountains here, actually in the Appalachians proper. But the timber rattlesnakes here are still this lowland canebrake face, and they are beautiful. They are very light colored, um, have a nice orange stripe down the back, really light grayish silver coloration actually 68 degrees right now this is the coolest weather that i have ever cruised a timber or canebrake rattlesnake in and believe it or not this is my first live one of the year um here in georgia um i have found montane timbers but this is my first canebrake so i'm really excited right now i didn't even know these snakes were here um i actually just um went down this road cruising for carolina pygmy rattlesnakes and sure enough um we got a rattlesnake, not a pygmy, but can't go wrong with this. I mean, just look at it. That is a beautiful snake. It's a little bit skinny, but really just a young little cane break. Hopefully it will fatten up um, before it gets cold. But yeah, guys, gorgeous cane break rattlesnake to start the night off. Um, I just laid my hook down up here, so I'm going to pick it up and move this little snake out of the road, and we will get a closer look. And right here is a closer look at this gorgeous canebrake rattlesnake now that I've moved it off the road. Um, this snake has not even tried to rattle at me yet, and that could be partially because of just how cool it is out. Um, it is moving pretty slowly right now, but um, really laid back snake for the most part. Um, not one I was expecting to get here. These canebrakes are really cool, especially the ones here in North Georgia. Most people think of canebrake rattlesnakes as a... Uh, coastal plain species, and that's true for the pinkish canes um, that occur from the fall line southward. But these up here are really cool. They actually occur in the range, um, well, at least the historic range of longleaf pine savannas. So unlike the montane timbers that have set dens and gestation sites, um, these gorgeous snakes use stump holes and they don't have set hibernaculums or places where they give birth. Um, they are a lot more spread out and solitary due to warmer climates. Um, whereas the montane timbers are more restricted because it's cold, it's a really short season. So uh, yeah, just look at that gorgeous pattern. Um, not the biggest one I have ever seen, but a really um, beautiful little cane break. So I'm going to get back on the road. Obviously snakes are moving. Um, hopefully we will get a Carolina pygmy rattlesnake and that will um, make my year. But um, this gorgeous cane break here has made my night, so really awesome start to the night. I'm going to hit the road, and we will see what else we can find. October 2nd now and it is the last warm night for the foreseeable future. Um, 
we have about a week of rain and cooler weather and that will be not ideal for pygmy rattlesnakes which typically quit crossing roads around mid-october so um, in a nutshell it's looking like this is going to be the final attempt so uh yeah the temperature has already hit 73 it is not looking good but i'm going to see if i can pull off a miracle tonight so i'm going to hit this road here and we will see what we can do all right, so I'm out here in the Georgia Piedmont. It's been a pretty slow night I'm out here with my good buddy Joe. And what we have here is a beautiful little mole king snake. This is one of this year's hatchlings here. These are a prairie species. They're a grassland snake, much like the snake equivalent of the tiger salamander. They like pretty much any open canopy habitats that can be anything from farm farmland to longleaf pine savannas. When they're young, they have this gorgeous coloration, really nice contrast, tannish body with really nice red spots. And as they age, they actually become more of a solid orange color all over. But um, good time of year for these little snakes. It's right at the tail end of the season. So really glad we got to see this one. One of my big targets this entire year. So really cool to finally see one. Um, I actually lost a massive adult just down the road from here around this time last year and that has haunted me to this day so pretty much a happy ending here with this gorgeous little hatchling right here is a closer look at this insanely beautiful little mole king snake this angle right here really puts it into perspective just look at those red blotches such gorgeous little snakes very underrated actually um, these are pretty easy to find in the piedmont of north carolina and certain areas but Certainly not in the Georgia Piedmont here and in, in northwest Georgia and all these surrounding areas they are very cryptic snakes. Um, it's the name Mole King Snake. They spend a lot of time underground. Just look at those coloration. Alright, we're gonna let this little mole king snake slither off into the habitat here. And let's hope it stays away from roads and grows up to be a big solid orange, big healthy adult, a mole's worst nightmare. These snakes eat a lot of moles and shrews out in these fields, but being king snakes, they are also reptile eaters. They'll eat other snakes, lizards, really anything they can get a hold of. At this size, there's not too many reptile options for them, but um, again, let's hope this snake grows up to be a nice, big, healthy adult mole king, but we're gonna let it make its way into the habitat here and keep on hitting this road and we'll see what else we can find tonight. So, it has now been a couple of hours since you guys last seen me with that beautiful little mole king snake. And the temperature dropped pretty quickly after I spent a good while filming and photographing that little snake. So, I didn't see anything else. Um, it was a little cool for much else to be moving. I feel like I got really lucky with that one because that is a species that I spent basically my whole summer and most of the fall looking for. And it took me right up until the very end here in October to uh, finally find one. So yeah, couldn't be happier with that. Um, was it the pygmy rattlesnake I was looking for, but certainly the next best thing. Um, even in that area of Georgia, mole king snakes are really hard to find. And what a way just to end a pretty insane streak of herping this week. Um, I had a really slow summer, a lot of rainy weather and a lot of things falling through that kept me from getting my targets, but it's really picking back up now here in the fall. So. Um, couldn't be happier with tonight and how this week has went as a whole, but with that being said, it's been a really good run, so I feel like it's a good time to end this video here. So like, comment, and subscribe if you want to. Do all that good stuff, and I will see you guys the next time I go out into the field. Thank you so much for watching.